you know, this is our first and last podcast. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> oh. I don't, I never. The elders of the church will rise up and save the Constitution. But in order for that to happen, there has to be at least some elders who know and understand the Constitution. And I have spent my entire adult life studying and coming to try and understand the Constitution and our founding documents as they were intended by the founders when they were written. If your own personal liberty doesn't stir you enough to action, that of your posterity should. It is on us to pass something down to our posterity that is worth passing down. I did two tours to Iraq. My second one wasn't anything special, but my first tour, and you know this, I was in Ramadi in 2005-2006 writing, writing some of the worst fighting of the entire war, and it was street fighting, and it was close, it was bloody, it was nasty. I, I've spilled blood, and I've buried my brothers. I don't want another war. I would love nothing more than to just to have everything go back to the way it was and all of us collectively work together to turn this nation back into what it is. I don't want to do that here. But if it's going to happen, which I think it is, it's inevitable an inevitability, and we all know that. It's a prophecy. I would much rather that I, that it's me that has to go than my children. I don't want my children to have to go through that. I don't want them to have to take a life. I don't want them to have to bury their their um, uh, the other people that they're fighting with because that's that is according to Lieutenant Colonel Grossman losing one of your one of your comrades in arms that is the second most painful loss that you can that you can endure next to the loss of a child. I, it's just, I would much rather it be me that has to fight than my kids, because I know how ugly it is. I know how ugly a civil war here would be, because the, estab the establishment and the media has done a wonderful job of turning the pre-pandemic, everybody hates the government, is starting to turn against them, to really just turning us against each other. Yeah. And we can all see it, but nobody will put the pieces together. And so they turn this into a race war. Not only are we fighting ourselves, but the United Nations is going to get involved, and the Russians and the Chinese, and it's just not going to be good for anybody. Yea, behold, if I do not fear your power, nor your authority, but it is my God whom I fear, and it is according to his commandments that I do take this, my sword to defend the cause of my country. And it is because of your iniquity that we have suffered so much loss. And then 29 says, Behold, it is time, yea, and the time is now at hand, that except ye do bestir yourselves in the defense of your country and your little ones, the sword of justice doth hang over you, yea, and it shall fall upon you and visit you even to your utter destruction. It's been, it's been said that if the United States falls, it won't fall from any outside threat. It will fall from the inside. And that's true. We're watching it happen right now with all these riots and all these people tearing shit down and wanting to to change, fundamentally change what this nation is. Mm -hmm. And we can't allow that. We just can't. Well, as a society, we've turned fear into a virtue. That's the first time that <laughs> yeah. that's the first time I've seen this happen. Is like, well, I'm, I'm don't, not that I know a ton of crap, but well, we, we've it, literally turned fear into a virtue, and it's like I'm more afraid of you, and so I'm more virtuous than you, <laughs> and you should you should be ashamed that you're not as scared as I am. That, that's abs that's absolutely right. You know, there, our society has turned a lot of things that are well cowardly into mm -hmm. a virtue. Fear is a virtue. And also, for some reason, I don't know why you would ever want this, but being a victim is also a virtue somehow. Yeah. Why Why anybody would ever want to be a victim basically saying, I'm not in control of my own life and my own destiny is beyond me. I'm not. I'm not. 
you're just a victim of your own stupidity. We all are. <laughs> That's how we learn. Yeah. If you don't make a stupid choice, then you're not going to learn anything. You make a good choice, you learn something. But, I mean, the most powerful lessons that we're going to learn as people is from our mistakes. The more painful the mistake, the stronger the lesson, the more of an impression that makes on us. Mm -hmm. Honestly, we, we want to find people who have the spark of freedom in them already. And then that well, that's what brought you to the three types of men. Yeah. So, I was, I was just telling Fred, there's, there's three types of men. You have violent men. And they are just... They're just hell-bent on sharing their pain and their suffering with other people. And that's just what they are. They're broken. They're not, they're not good men. Then you have, you have peaceful men. And peaceful men, in order to be peaceful, you have to be capable of great violence. Otherwise, you're not peaceful. You're just harmless. And so, to be peaceful, you must be capable of violence. Then you have your third type of man is a harmless man. You're not peaceful, you're just harmless. You don't have the you don't have the fortitude to rise up to violence to defend yourself or somebody else the needs be. And I was telling I was about to tell Fred there's nothing wrong with that. But there is. If you're not if you're not willing to rise up defend yourself, defend your family, or defend somebody else, why should somebody else be willing to do that for you? You're your own first responder. You're the first person on scene. You're the first person that's going to be there to have to take care of yourself or your family if the need arises, and you're going to need a gun. That's if you're an American, if you live in another country, that sucks and you should move here. <laughs> well, legally. And then you should assimil assimilate, assimilate yourself to our culture. <laughs> One of the things that, um, that really gets me is like, it's very easy to think, oh, we're in this, this, there's a lot of great people. There's a lot of good people around us. There's a lot of, and then you have this, this safety net where you don't have to act. You, you always assume that, oh, someone else will take care of it. Someone else will fix the problem. But you look at, I mean, just if you look at, spend any amount of time looking at some of the riots that have been going on for the last three months. Just yesterday, you had people in New York who were sitting at a table, like the, the, the restaurants, they were just out to dinner at restaurants, and mobs came and broke the tables, and they, they, they were turning over tables while people were sitting there. Throwing shit all over. Just... Yeah, and it's just, it was, it was one of those things that we all think that, oh, someone else will take care of it, and someone else will stand and that's not the way it works. You are the cavalry. There's there's no other cavalry coming. It's you. And you have to stand up and you have to first be prepared to like like what you said about the peaceful men. A peaceful man is not someone who never does harm. A peaceful man who is capable of harm and chooses to be peaceful. That's where agency really comes in. You're not exercising agency if you make yourself incapable of harm. If you make yourself unable to hurt something or someone else to protect those around you. And, and the, the thought comes to my mind with my kids, like with, with spankings and stuff, you know? A lot of parents are like, oh, you can't, you got to be really, really, uh, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of diverse um, ways of thinking about raising kids. But when I give my kids a spanking, I don't enjoy it. I don't do it out of anger. I never, one thing I remember from my dad, when I would get a spanking as a kid, it was never something that my dad did impulsively it was always put your hands against the wall you're getting a licking you know are, are you saying he wasn't laughing maniacally as he whooped your ass no your butt you, your you know butt. He, well the, here's the thing one time i remember we snuck uh we tried using pillows sticking them in our pants and he caught that but i took <laughs> i took my dad's wallets I would take, he had a few wallets in his closet and I put one in each of my back pockets and he didn't notice a few times. I felt bad about it. And so I told him about it. So I got like two spankings after that, you know? Awesome. <laughs> one for each wallet. Yeah, but, but it, it totally worked. But, but I guess coming back to it, when it's like, when, when I have to, when my kids do something wrong and they need to be punished and it's not like there's, 
if I can fix it verbally and I can tell them and teach them verbally and they can learn a lesson verbally, that's how I choose to do it. Yeah. But when they when they can't learn, especially when they're young, like for instance, if a kid runs out in the street, you can't you can't be okay with that because the next time he does that, he could be hit by a car. Yeah. They have to have something abrupt that lets them know that is not okay. And yeah. a spanking is like it's not something you enjoy doing. But it just needs to be done, and that's violence is the same thing. It's not something that you you seek out. You don't want to be a hero and go and hurt people. It's you. It's just something that has to be done. And if you can't stand up and do it, then you are in that third category of man who is. Last last thing before we go, um, do something. I, the last thing I would say is do do something now, whether that's writing a representative, whether that's going and getting yourself a, a firearm or. A, signing up for a uh, concealed carry class or whatever it is, getting some food storage, starting a garden, whatever it is, do something that'll make yourself more self-sufficient. Do something that'll bring knowledge to yourself or your neighbors or your kids. Do something that will uh, express the desire for freedom to those around you, especially those in government. Do something, get involved, find a group that aligns with your values. Be prepared. Oh, don't drop the phone. Okay. That's all I think. I think so. Be strong. Be of good courage. Fear not.